Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello again modelers. Well it's been another week, it's another video. I'm not sure how much longer these videos will run for to be perfectly honest because the idea is to show the detailing and from this point forwards I'm going to be sort of finishing the model off, painting it um, and that sort of thing. Now, if you want to see the, you know, the painting and how it's masked, uh, how I spray it uh, and that sort of stuff, then put, put, some, um, put a message in the comments or something like that. Otherwise, I'm just going to plow on uh, and paint the thing uh, without documenting it. Um, so today we're just going to be looking at how I fitted the last bit of glazing on the canopy. Uh, last bit of bits and pieces around the place. I also masked off the entire glazing ready for paint uh, and to protect it so that um, you know it doesn't get scratched or marked be between now and when it's finished. Um, I've also done a bit on the exhaust. You're not, I've not really filmed what I've done but basically the exhaust which was shown in in a previous video where I made the exhaust from uh, brass tubing and silver soldered it together. Uh, that's, I think it's silver soldering 101 and 102 is how I made it. Uh, but what I've actually done is it's now fitted permanently to the model, um, although it'll have to come off again to get the tank in and stuff like that and, and when I spray it. Uh, but I've used a, a, P, a stainless steel P-clip with a rubber insert to firmly attach the exhaust to the airframe. Now it's not rigid, but it is firm. Okay, and uh, that, that should sort us out.
So the edge is actually cut almost to where it goes flat. And you could actually even remove the front bit where it goes flat. But it will give you more bonding area as you slot it in there. So still a little bit proud through here. Got to make sure these are sitting inside the wing rib. And I'm going to have to get my red felt pen out and paint the inside of the top of that rib where it's showing. The rest is fine. I do have a minor concern that when these this panel is glued in, that's it. I can't get into the cockpit. And that could be a problem because if suddenly I have a hard landing and the pilot moves and falls forward or falls out of his seat or the seats come loose or something comes loose inside there, I won't be able to get inside to put it right. Um, so th there is a, a part of me that actually wants to fit, say, neodymium magnets into these corners to hold them down. And in here, fit something like this rod underneath there, inside, and then put screws through into the wood. So that if I do need to take this section off, it's just magnets at the back and the screws at the front. It won't look as nice, but I think that might be the safer option to follow. I'll have a look around and see what I've got, because I need something that's as, as stiff as this, but I'd like something smaller and less obtrusive. So what I really would like was something like um, maybe a three mil square section of carbon. But I'll have a look in the in the box and see what I've got. So I think I have a plan of attack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this section of carbon rod underneath the front windscreen, drill it and uh, put screws in. I'm using a, a jeweler's file to cut this carbon. Okay, and there we have it. Let's tidy up the end a little bit with something that won't matter. So back over at the model, here's the carbon, uh, the square section carbon tube that I've cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to force it in there like that. And I'm going to drill it to accept some tiny small screws. Okay, in this section go over the top and the screws will go through and clamp this to this and this to the model. Then at the back I'm still liking the idea of some near dimming magnets. If I could get some square ones, that would be really good. I'll have to have a rummage again in my <laughs> magnets box and see what I've got lying around. But I'm very pleased with the way the canopy has bulged so that it clears the cruciform inside. Because as we were building this, if you realise, this cruciform was higher than the wing root ribs to clear the pilot's head. And that's how it is on the full size. To give the pilot some clearance, this is angled upwards. And to give some clearance for that, this is bubbled out, you know, it's a blown piece of perspex. Must have quite cost quite a lot on the full size. Anyway, that's the plan. One of the great things about using this red for the interior is areas where, you know, you, you maybe have a little bit of balsa showing through, you can just paint over the top with a bit of a red felt pen. And there's a gap here that's quite noticeable because I've shaved a little bit of the bolster away. And that can get filled in then quite easily. You'll also see this whole section here is visible. So just give this a go. I'm 
very difficult. Not difficult at all, but awkward, shall we say, to get in there. I could just get the brush, the brush out and the paint. I thought this would be quick. It may not be as quick. There's a brush and a paint. But I've started now, so I'll finish. If you're doing the DB Sport and Scale Oster, like this one, and you get this top section of, of Perspex or PETG, whatever you want to call it, clear plastic, it's really daunting because it's such a big molded piece and you think this is going to cost me a small fortune to replace it if I get it wrong. So now having seen the shape that you need to cut it to, because the plans don't tell you, I hope that you'll feel a little bit more comfortable getting the scissors out or the, or the Dremel as I did to cut it. Um, it's too long a piece really for scissors so uh, I used the Dremel. And there we go. That should do it. I think I'm going to leave this being black. It doesn't look too obtrusive. I think if I make it grey it'll be visible and it's not supposed to be there so I'm going to leave it black. Let's mix up some epoxy and get that in. Usually I like to use an artist's palette knife for epoxy. But in this instance, because I want to put it into a very, very tight location and I want some very precise application of the epoxy, I'm using these barbecue skewers. They're made of bamboo. Um, it's great. Right, so get that nicely mixed up. And we'll go over to the model and get it stuck. And that should do it. I need to give that 15 minutes to dry, go hard. And then I think I'm going to uh, run some glue on the inside of there. And then we'll give that probably overnight to cure. I was rather remiss in the previous video when we attached this front section. I didn't mention that this is Formula 560, which is made by Pacer Systems, and it's a, a canopy glue. And it dries slightly flexible, which is just what you want for this. And it sticks to plastic, like you wouldn't believe. And it dries nice and clear, which is again, exactly what we want in this case. That should do us. You can never have too many clamps in aero modeling. And it doesn't matter what clamps you have, they'll be the wrong ones. These are pretty good ones. They're really cheap from some air show somewhere. Actually, that's got a missing book on it, so let's not use that one. These are really, really cheap. But if I could get some a more modern version, a better quality version, that would be lovely. But uh, I've not seen them. Ooh. 
Oops. You'd think with it being square section, it would be easier to easy to get these to sit right, but <laughs> it's not the case. But you can see it's squeezing the glue nicely. This will also help to remove the the bow that we uh, we noticed. And we uh, relax the clamp. One more if it'll go. And I think if we give that until tomorrow to dry, we should be cooking with gas. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, I thought I'd introduce you to Biggles. Biggles was acquired as a cat, but we're not really sure. He does tend to have dog-like tendencies. And he does love to roll around on the floor a lot. A cute cat though. Hello Biggles. That is sitting perfectly flat now. Perfect. We couldn't ask for better. I think that should work really well. Some screws along here, but I'm going to wait for that to to dry just a bit more. And in the back here there are two smooth, small screw holes that I put into these runners and then I've hardened the thread holes with some CA. So I think after a few screws and what have you tomorrow I can declare fuselage sealed. So good progress will be on paint before you know it. I think Mick Reeves on his website, if you've never been to Mick Reeves' website, go and have a look. It's, um, it's like a little Aladdin's cave. It's probably one of the worst websites you've ever seen. Um, it hasn't changed in what seems like about 500 million years. Um, and things are laid out in a sort of very haphazard, in a sort of a listing method. <laughs> it's, it's quite quaint uh, and really could do with modernising. But funnily enough, you always can find what you want and uh, Mick and Jim and Sandy are always very quick to respond to orders and telephone calls and emails so um, go and have a look at the Mick Reeves website it's, um, it's well worth a browse but I should lock your wallet away before you go on there because there's so many great things on there that you uh, you just don't know how you survived without so there you go you can see We've got a pretty good um, finish on that. I'm really quite pleased with that. And it's taken away that bulge that we had there. And I was thinking I'd have to put a litho strip along here to disguise it, but that actually doesn't look silly as it is. Uh, what I'll do is I'll mask to the sides of it. Um, and then I'll actually spray this with the outside color of the aircraft. I think I don't think that would look unreasonable or or just leave it like that. It's, it, it, it looks fine. I might remove the purple pen marks though. <laughs>
we've got one more thing to do before we can declare this uh, this canopy done. And it's quite a nerve-wracking thing, but I've got to drill a, two little holes in the back here for these for these screws. And this is quite nerve-wracking. Here's the camera, so you can see what I'm doing. And when I make a mess, you can sort of say, hmm, I could see that coming. Just want to hold it still and keep it in position. I'll do this next bit. It's not pulled down amazingly at the back, but it's pulled down enough for me. That'll do. I'm going to have to go at an angle first. That's one of them. Gradually go up in size on the drill. These are lovely drills, really nice. I don't know what what they're called, but uh, basically the, the bit that goes in the drill is nice and large, but the drill bits themselves are nice and small. Now the screws that are going in here are a bit bigger than these. And yet we need to be slightly larger. These are another really useful set of tools. This was by the, you can still get them through Expo. But what they are, really long drill bits. Um, and I don't really need a really long drill bit at this point, but it's the, um, they are to hand, should we say. Now let's see if that's big enough for these screws to pass through. So that was 1.8. Let's go to a 2mm. Might be able to do this with my fingers. Yeah. I think that'll probably do it. That's actually pulled it down a little bit more than I was expecting, which is great. And the tension's lovely, you can really feel it really tightening into the wood.
So seven screws at the front and just the two screws at the back. And you don't need anything along here because this has got a curve on it, it's made it very stiff. So that's not going anywhere. So with that, I think I can declare that section done. What I'd like to look at next, and I don't know whether this will work or not, but I'll give it a go. If it does, then great. If it doesn't, then we'll just leave it. Um, but I'd like to put an aluminium strip along here, which means it's going to have to be shaped into a V channel. Um, flat against that, and flat against the windscreen. So a V channel. So I'm not sure how I'll do it yet. So I'll cut some bits of litho plate. Probably start with some bits of paper, actually. Get a template and cut some litho plate. And then um, we'll see if we can make that channel and bend it at the same time. Could be quite fun.
So I hope you got something from the video. Um, it's a bit of a bitter <laughs> video. Um, and as I say, if you want to see the painting and that sort of stuff, then please put some comments in the, uh, you know, put something in the comments so uh, so I know what, what you want. Otherwise, there's going to be some gaps and uh, the Friday at 8 o'clock won't, won't be contiguous, shall we say. All right. Well, it's been fun. Speak to you soon.